Hi everyone. I'm Supasala Panagian Gai. Today I'm going to present our paper Predicting Defective Lies Using a Model Agnostic Technique. This paper is now published on transaction on software engineering. Briefly, in this work, we propose a novel framework to identify defective lies using a model agnostic technique that provides information why the model makes such a prediction. Next, I will talk about the motivation of our paper. Software Quality Assurance, or SQA, is one of software engineering practices for ensuring the quality of a software product. When Chen5 will be merged into the release brand, an SQA team needs to carefully identify defects in those chain files. However, due to the limit SQA result, it is feasible to examine the entire chain file. Hence, to spend the optimal effort on the SQA activity, an SQA team needs to prioritize files that are likely to have defects in the future and then identify defects in those, in those defect prone files. As a result, defect prediction models are proposed to help SQA teams prioritize their effort by analyzing poor release software defects that occur in the previous release. And clearly, defect prediction models have been log investigated at different granularity levels, for example, package component files and methods. However, developer could still waste an SQA effort on manually identify the most leaky lines since the current prediction granularity is still perceived as cost grain. In addition, our motivating analysis on 32 release that span nine open source software system from the Apache open source software project shows that as little as 1% to 3% of the lines of code in a file are actually defective after release. Such guessing that developer could waste their SQA effort on up to 99% of key lines of a defective file. Trust, line level defect prediction models would ideally help the team to save a huge amount of the SQA effort. And our framework consists of two main parts, file level defect models and a model agnostic technique. So first I will start with how we build file level defect model. Given a file level defect data set, in other words, a set of source code files and a label of defective or clean, we first extract back of token features for each file. Then we train a traditional machine learning technique using the extract feature to build a file level defect model. We then use the file level defect model to estimate the probability that a testing file will be defective. For each file that is treated as defective, we use LAM, a model agnostic technique that aims to mimic the behavior of the prediction of the defect model by explaining the individual prediction to explain a prediction of which code token leads to the file level defect model. To explain that the file will be defective. Then the line that contain those code tokens are predicted as defective. Finally, we rank defect pool lines based on the number of risky tokens that appear in the defect pool lines. Then to make the audience clearly understand how our effort works, I will show an example. Given a defect prone file, we use LAM to compute an important score of features. We then identify the token that have a positive LAM score as leaky token because the positive score indicate that the feature has a positive impact or the estimate probability of the defect prone file. In the example, node and colon have a LAM score of 0.8 and 0.1 respectively. 
Hence, these two tokens are identified as leaky token. Then we define a defect polar as the line that contains at least one of the leaky token. Therefore, these three files are identified as defect polar. The innovation behind our approach is that code token that frequently appear in defective files in the past may also appear in the last that will be fixed after release. In this work, we evaluate our approach in terms of predictive accuracy, ranking performance, computation time, and the type of uncovered defect. However, due to the limit time, I will present only three, these three main research questions, which are predictive accuracy, ranking performance, and computation time. We compare our airport against the sickbed light airport that are potential to identify defective light speed or the literature, which are random guessing to, stat to static analysis tool which are Google error prone and PMD and Ingram model and to traditional model interpretation based on a posh using logistic regression and random forest. And in terms of predictive accuracy, our empirical evolution shows that our airport achieved and overall predictive accuracy better than the best airport in terms of recall, MCC and distance to heaven. Is, that is the combination of recall and fall alarm. Even though some baseline outperform in terms of fall alarm, many defective lights are still missed by the baseline approach according to the recall value. So for this equation one, we conclude that our airport achieved and our predictive accuracy better than the light at Porsche. Next, we also compare the ranking performance of our airport against the line level baseline at Porsche. Given a fixed amount of effort, in other words, the top 20% of line that are ranked by our airport and baseline at Porsche, our airport identified actual defective lights better than bed light approach. Furthermore, fewer key lights will be exempt to find the first defective light when linking by our approach. So for research question two, we conclude that given a fixed amount of effort, our approach identify actual defective lights better than bed light approach. Beside the predictive accuracy, at lagging performance, we also investigate the computational cost of identifying defective lights of our approach when compared to other approach. And we find that NLP based approach take longer computational time than our approach for both within and costly validation, although the study static analysis tools and the TMI-based airport take shorter time than our airport. The additional computation time of our airport should still be manageable when considering the predictive accuracy of defective lines. In conclusion, our airport can effectively identify defective lines while requiring a small a smaller amount of SQA effort in terms of light of course with a manageable computation time. Therefore, we hope that our work build an important step toward light level defect prediction by le leveraging a model agnostic technique that can help developers effectively prioritize SQA effort. That's all about my presentation. Thank you for your listening. Okay, welcome to the Q&A session for the paper Predicting Defective Lines Using a Model Agnostic Technique. And I'm very happy to have two of the authors here with us today, Supatsara and uh, Chakrit. 
And um, if you have any questions from the audience, please post them in the chat, and I will try to discuss them with the authors. But uh, I can start a little bit by myself saying that I really enjoyed reading this paper. So I think it's a super important work, and thanks a lot for doing it. I think explainable AI is going to be crucial, right? Because otherwise we have all these black box models that no one understands. And my experience from industry is that if the practitioners don't trust or understand the model, they are very less likely to want to adopt the technique. So I think yeah, this is very important. So I really like the, the work. And um, let's see, we have some questions from Lingham Meng here. As is known, buggy lines exist in various files. Will your technique, line DP, provide a unified rank list for all buggy lines uh, in different defective files in the same project? I guess we can start with that one. So do you do it per file or do you do get like a global ranked list or how do you do this? So Pastor Rabbi, you want to go first? Oh. Okay, I will go <laughs> first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question is, will like the people why a unified rank list for all buggy lines existing mm -hmm. in different defective files in a same project. Mm -hmm. So for our work, we the the lang, lang line that provide by our approach will come from the all defective files. Um, so <coughs> Sorry, uh, maybe I, I, I should jump in. Uh, I have to say that uh, LAM actually provide a five grand explanation. That means uh, the, 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 the rank list of the bucky lines uh, should be specific to that uh, prediction or to that file. So it's not going to be a unified rank list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So different mm -hmm. files should have different uh, uh, list of the bucky lines. Yeah. So that's the key idea and the key benefits of the uh, the model acoustic technique that we use in our approach. Mm -hmm. But 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 I guess the 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 original model. I think in your case it was a logistic regression model, right? So I guess the original um, uh, model does it give like a binary prediction or is it some kind of probability of defectiveness? Okay, so I think uh, so the the model so. Our approach is like a two-step. First, we build the model at the file level, and then we use LAM to explain which tokens in that file are actually risky. And then we do some computation, try to prioritize uh, based on the, the LAM score that uh, which lines are actually the most risky. So um, so we have we can do like a two two-step predictions, yeah, at the file level and the lines level. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if so, how to yeah uh if so how to rank them yes yeah, so as already mentioned that uh, the, um, uh each token actually has different uh, risky score so we uh i as far as i remember we do the summation of each line and then we just sort based on the top to the bottom how the buggy lines within the five are ranked yeah so we sort the, the based on the score of that tokens how yeah, the buggy lines across different yeah, files can, are Maybe I can um, can have a detailed question on this because when I the way I understood it, you actually count the number of tokens in a line that are in the top twenty. Um, so um, it seemed to me that you only count them. So you don't use kind of the strength uh, or you know the relative rank of the tokens, or or do you? The relative ranks, uh, what do you mean again? So, so I mean, uh, let's say there are two tokens in one line that are contributing to the defectiveness uh, prediction. And uh, let's say that uh, Lime could say that one of the tokens is like a stronger effect. Uh, or do you just say that, oh, we have two tokens, so this the value of this line is two, <laughs> the, the defectiveness is two. or do you somehow take the relative strength of the tokens into account? 
Oh yes, uh, of course, yes. So different, uh, as I already mentioned, different tokens has uh, different uh, scores. So the summation okay. of the score for each line will be different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we have a, a question from Aise Tosun here in the chat. Uh, do you apply the model on every code change, or or when when do you apply this? So, uh, Supasra, do you want to go? Okay. So, can can so I don't quite fully understand the question. So okay. <laughs> Okay, maybe I can answer this one. Uh, for this paper, we actually built at the file level. So we built the file level defect prediction model. We didn't apply uh, for each code change. We didn't look at the just-in-time defect prediction. But if you are interested in the just-in-time defect prediction, we also have the paper Cheat Live, which is published at MSR this year as well. Okay, yeah. So so uh, the ISIS question is, is relevant, but for an for, uh, uh, extension of the technique, I guess. Uh, so Lingham also has a question, whether the code lines, including buggy and non-buggy ones, in non-defective files are considered to compute. Uh, yeah, can, can you point to this? So do you look at also the non the, the model predicts that some uh, files are non-defective. Then do you somehow use the code lines in that or you will not look at those at all, those files? For this one, uh, we didn't look. I think we... Um, <clears throat> in non-defective no because uh for the non-defective files there's no de uh, defective lines anyway so we didn't look at that one we just only focus on the actual defective files and see whether uh, our approach can prioritize or identify defective lines how good is that very good thank you and uh, i also had a question so it was interesting to me that you find that logistic regression was actually <laughs> better than some of the more advanced models, um, which is good, right? Because it's easier to, to understand a, a linear model like logistic regression model. But do you really need line then? Because the, the nice thing in a linear model like logistic regression is that you can already look at the effect of tokens from the model itself. So <laughs> what's the added value of line in, in this uh, case? Yes. A very good question. Uh, again, uh, I think if we look at the uh, coefficients of the logistic regression model, we can only get the global explanations. That means uh, from the global level, what are the most important tokens that are associated with the defect proneness? But such kind of explanation are not uh, specific to the to the prediction that we. Uh, I mean to the files that we are going to predict. So that's why we need to use uh, our approach to provide a more specific explanation or actually pinpoint which lines or which tokens are actually defective for that particular prediction instead of mm -hmm. just the global level. Yeah, but, but, but my question is more that Lime has sort of an extra use for, a, let's say, a deep neural net where you cannot look even at the Right? Do you see what I mean? That in some sense, the logistic regression model gives you something in between a fully global and a, and a local prediction in some sense. But yeah, I understand what, you, what you're saying. Okay, we're coming to an end. So thank you very much. Interesting work. And thank you also to the audience. Many good questions. So yeah, hope to see you soon in some other session. And uh, we, we, we quit here, so we are not cut, cut off. Uh, and there also a quick question, open sourcing, line DP, will you do that? Line DP, I think uh, the open source, uh, I think the approach is, uh, everything is, uh, has, um, yeah, so let's see, let's see, yeah. But actually we already uh, provide the, the data sets uh, for future uh, replication. Uh, if okay. anyone is interested, then uh, yeah, yeah. feel free to do it. <laughs> We're going to be cut.